Ladies and gentlemen, never in between, welcome to Talking at Six. I am your host, One Six, aka the Swilly Scott Pilly, aka Young Neil with Mass Appeal, aka here to make you think about death and get sad and stuff, aka charmingly awkward. Nah, just awkward, aka the only good video game movie, aka Bread Makes You Fat, aka. Reaching my threshold, staring at the truth till I'm blind. A.K.A. Chicken isn't vegan? A.K.A. So sad. A.K.A. You punched the highlights out of her hair. A.K.A. The capacity to geek. A.K.A. Launchpad McQuack. In today's episode, I'll be discussing slash reviewing the Scott Pilgrim series. Which includes the books, the movie, and the video game. For those of you who aren't familiar, Scott Pilgrim is a 22 to 23 year old. He's a guy in his early 20s living in Canada who recently went through a rough breakup and is rebounding by dating a 17 year old girl in high school. It's creepy. I know. It sounds really weird. The relationship between him and her is super, super innocent, though they don't do anything weird. Anyway, the story follows him and his journey of. Like, it's going from his relationship with Knives to him dating Ramona Flowers, who is around his age and is from America and just has a kind of a, you know, I don't want to say shady, but, like, kind of a unknown backstory. Like, she's new to the, she's new to Canada, so no one really knows too much about her. Her backstory is all kind of mysterious, and Scott sees that as a plus, basically. Like, sees her mystery, mysterious background is a great thing. Well, eventually it turns out, it find, he finds out that actually all her, like, her seven evil exes, her seven, her seven, seven of her exes actually joined forces together and formed a group called the League of Evil Exes and basically band together to destroy anyone that tries to date Ramona because they can't be with her, no one, they can't be with her, no one can. And it's all led by her most recent ex, Gideon, who... Basically, like, spoiler for, basically, major spoiler for the movie and the books, dude just can't let go. Like, it's basically what it comes down to is literally all her exes just can't let go. Like, they don't know how to move on. Like, they're just, they have issues letting on, moving on. And no offense to Ramona. It's like nothing, especially nothing special about her. Like, but it's like, the way they all broke, the, they're all, the relationship with her, they're all their relationship with her all ended in really messed up ways. Kind of, you know, terrible ways. She admit, but she openly admits to it. It's like, you know, I was a bad person in the past. You know, I've hurt people. I've done shitty things. Like. And pretty much all their breakups, the first, like, six, all their breakups were terrible. And then with Gideon is actually where the roles were flipped, where it's, like, where everyone else, she was, like, super distant and, like, got away from them, was, like, was distant with them and, like, cold to them and just kind of shut them out and just moved on. Gideon kind of shut her out, like, pretty much the entire relationship. He just showed her no attention. Like, basically, like, once they started dating, he didn't care about her. It showed no zero interest in her, just kind of pushed her off to the side and kind of ignored her until she left. Then suddenly he has, like, all this interest in her like now he wants her back because she left me super obsessed with her and trying to get her back and everything and thus why he built why he created the league of evil exes to stop anyone from dating her in the future and so like he finds out scott's dating her like it becomes their goal to destroy her destroy him and like that kind of is the plot for both movie and the book but they do like there are some really key differences in both mostly because the book series like when the movie got greenlit when the producer and studios decided to make the movie only the first book was on only the first book existed. And so, like, the first book existed, and they took... We're gonna make a movie out of it. So, the second book, there's six books total. Six books in the series total. The first book came out, movie got greenlit. The second book and the movie were written at the same time. Like, the creator of the book series also helped write on the movie. Like, he wasn't... I don't think he was the only writer. He wasn't the only writer, but he, like, also worked in a movie. He worked on the movie while also writing the second book at the same time. So a lot of the dialogue in the movie is, like, straight out of the second book. Like, there's, like, scene-for-scene scene matches from between the books and the movie. And, like, it's crazy because, like, I've only... For a long time, I've only ever seen the movie. I was like, oh, this is a really good movie. And people was like, oh, you gotta read the books. The books are better, or blah, blah, blah. You know, things are different in the book. I was like, okay, is it really that different? It's like, man, I don't know if I really want to read the books. If it's gonna be that different because I really like the movie. Read the books. I'm like, okay, first book is like, okay, I mean, this is that different there's slight differences get to the second book and i was like man you know motherfuckers lie man ain't shit different this shit is word for word the same motherfucker these are scene for scene from the movie and like by the time i finished the series i looked it up and realized oh they wrote the book the second book and the movie at the same time so yes of course the second book is exactly the movie 
But once you get past the second book, it's like, oh, there's like, okay, okay, there's shit different that they, things, because, like I said, second book was written as a movie, the rest of the books were written, the, the next four books were written after the movie, so they had time to change things, and basically they had a space to do whatever, the creator had a space to do whatever he wanted with it, and it's still pretty similar, like, key concepts are still, some of the key concepts are still there, but like, yeah, like, a lot of characteristics are different, there's are certain things that, but basically it's, they, they had one movie, so it's like, it's more, it's basically similar to lower, but it's more expanded in the book, there's more to expand on, they have more space to go with it, you know, more freedom to do things with it, because it's not limited to a time frame, like the movie is, like, the movie is super limited, like, the movie's really good, I highly recommend checking out the movie, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, really fucking good movie, really creative, like, director, uh, Edgar, Edgar Wright directed it, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Edgar Wright really did, directed it, like, it's super, like, creative, like, cuts between transitions, between scenes, and, like, Michael Cera is great in it. The whole cast is really great and funny, and just they pull off the characters really well. And like the music choices is good. Like a lot of the songs in the movie are from this band Metric, which I guess are like which I guess is a Canadian band. But like a lot of the music hits really hard. It's really good. But uh, like the movie is really fucking good. <laughs> I also recommend checking out the books because like the way the books expand. Like there's characters in the book that are never brought up in the movie that are never mentioned. The movie the, the movie doesn't have a lot of time to go into every character's backstory. It mostly just kind of like it kind of hints at Scott's backstory but doesn't go super far into it. It's mostly about his pursuit of Ramona and kind of her past, like the little like mysterious snippets of her past that he knows of that we get that she tells him or like he finds out from other people that like little pieces that he get that he kind of pieces together. But like in the book, it's more like it goes deep into Scott's backstory. It goes into Kim, who's the drummer of the band Sex Bomb on and also happens to be one of Scott's exes. Like, and like their relationship is like crazy because in the movie, it's just like, oh, we did it in high school and she had freckles. Like, and Scott's like, Ramona asks, Ramona asks Scott, why did him and Kim break up? You know, you dated before. Why did you break up? And he's like, oh, he's like, oh, I don't know. That was years ago. That was so long ago. That was high school and she had freckles. It's like, and that's it. Like, he doesn't really expand on it. And, like, throughout the whole movie, it's like, Kim's, like, constantly pissed at him. Like, just hates Scott. Just has all this hatred from Scott. It's like, where does all this hatred come from? It's just like, and, the, like, leave it to Scott. It's just her being bitter about them breaking up. But, like, in the book, you realize, oh, it's not because, just because they broke up. It's how they broke up. It's how their relationship started. It's, like, just a lot of shit that, like, Scott, basically, it happens, it's present in both the book and the movie that Scott kind of just never acknowledges that he's ever done anything wrong. So, like, in his mind, he's never done anything bad. And, like, he blacks out all the bad stuff. But in the book, like, it really deeps dive into it. And, like, slight spoiler. Sorry. But it isn't, it's, trust me, still read, you should still read it. This isn't going to spoil anything. But it turns out, like, Scott doesn't just, it's not just Scott's, oh, blacking out his bad memories. It turns out fucking Gideon's actually messing with his, <laughs> Gideon actually messed with his mind and changed all of his bad memories to good memories. So Scott thinks literally everything he's ever done is good. Like, all the things he's ever done were good. Like, all his breakups were ever good. All his relationships ended well. Everything was always great. And, like, you finally, like, you hear from... Eventually, it comes out. Like, Scott's, like, talking to Kim at one point, And, like, they're talking about how they broke up and, like, how they met and, like, why they broke up. And, like, Scott telling his other story. And she's like, Kim's like, no, that's not how it happened in any way. And she tells him, like, <laughs> what actually happened. You realize, oh, Scott's memories. Like, Scott is a... What, what's, it, what's it called? A unreliable narrator. Like, it turns out, oh, Scott's memories of everything are actually fucked up. And, like, none of this shit actually went the way he did. Like, in his mind, all the things he did, he was, like, super heroic and super awesome. And, like, a really good guy and just super nice and did all these great things. And, like, the reality was just, like, Scott was kind of an asshole, dude. Like, all this shit was kind of, he was just kind of a jerk and, like, didn't show any remorse for it. And didn't, like, never really apologize for any of it and never really, like stepped up and said, oh, yeah, I fucked up, my bad, like, and made any attempt to change, because in his mind, nothing, it was ever wrong, he did everything great, and it's super fucking crazy, like, that's one of the huge, like, huge changes from the book, but it's like, the movie also kind of hints at it, because it talks about, like, when Ramona asks, why did him, why did Scott and Kim break up, and, like, you could, like, hear, like, when he walked in, it's like, oh, well, why, you hear Scott walk, they're, like, walking by, and you hear, like, a voice over Kim screaming, no, and it's like, she's just, like, looking kind of sad in her face, and, like, and it just, camera cuts away from her, and it's like, what the fuck, like, clearly hitting that, oh, there's something deeper there, uh, eventually when Scott breaks up with knives, like, another sp spoiler, sorry, but fucking Scott, like, basically cheats on knives with, Kent, with Ramona, so basically he cheats on both of them with each other, because he's still dating, he's still dating knives when he starts dating Ramona, and, like, two, is like, two or three days after he starts dating Ramona, he finally breaks up with knives, and, like, doesn't really give her a good reason, and just kind of just completely breaks her heart, because she's completely, like, head over heels in love with this guy, she's super mad about him, and all she sees is, like, he broke up with her, next thing, and the next time she sees him, he's out with Ramona, so he, she assumes that Ramona commenced, that Ramona's the reason why Scott broke up with her, Scott, that Ramona commenced Scott to leave, ah, shit, 
Nice is convinced Ramona convinced Scott to leave Nice for Ramona when in reality Ramona knew nothing about Nice. Scott never said anything. She didn't know they were dating at all. She knew nothing about it. And Scott never just manned up and said anything. And it's just, you know, because I was like, so the whole thing is like, Scott's kind of a dick and just never really admits it. And like, I know you were saying, like, man, well, how was he like, why is this guy a likable character so shitty? It's one of those weird things where it's like, it's shitty if you really dive into it. It's like, oh man, it's really shitty and unlikable. But he's also like goofy, like almost like quirky and like neighbor, like goofy. This was a side, if this was a sitcom, he'd be like the goofy next door neighbor, like his sidekick character, you know? Whereas like, I also think like him being played by Michael Sarah in a movie was great casting because it doesn't, you never fully like, except you never fully see him as like, no offense, it's Michael Sarah. So you don't see him as a jerk. He's kind of like, ah, he's awkward. And yeah, sure, he's doing not great things, but he's like, he's awkwardly charming, you know? So like, he kind of pulls it off. But like, excuse me, at the end, like for my, like, my perspective, it was always was like, oh, yeah, Scott, you know, it's kind of awkwardly. It really is like, oh, I'll never do it. Like, I guess it says a lot about me because I never really, I'm not saying he, I never thought he did anything wrong. I just never like, until I read the books, it never fully hit me. It was like, oh, like I never did the fucking deep dive, like the mental deep dive, the mental thought that I should put the thought into realize, oh, how fucked up everything he did actually was. Like, you don't realize because the way it's played off, like Scott's the main character, so he's played to be the good guy. But in reality, it's like there is no technically, like, they're just worse people. There's no real good guy. There's no one who's like truly altruistic, like good in the fucking either movie or the books. It's just like, it's just people. It exists in their early 20s living their lives, you know? dealing with life taking as you go and like just coming like almost it's basically a coming of age story but like of people in their early 20s and just dealing with shit that happens and it's like it's really relatable like some parts of it like it's really relatable and just like the struggles of like oh like scott, scott moved out of his parents house and he moved when his friend uh wallace and like their apartment's like really shitty like a really shitty one room apartment and like all the stuff in it is all the stuff in it is Wallace. Like all Wallace only has is Wallace's stuff. All like all their furniture, like all their stuff is Wallace's. All Scott really has is like his clothes. They share a bed. Like they they literally share a bed because Scott doesn't have a bed. Scott has nothing. Scott's just like super like just slacker. Just kind of like man, he just got out and got to the got you know grew up, got out of the real world, and just completely on his own had nothing, and just kind of like never really like got to the point of doing anything, except for in the book. Like it's him meeting Ramona, like, eventually, like, leads to him, like, trying harder in life and trying to be a better person and, like, eventually actually getting a job and, like, him and, like, him finding a nicer apartment. Well, technically, him finding a nicer apartment is him moving to Ramona. Oh, that's spoiler, sorry. But it's him, he ends up moving in with Ramona because him and Wallace, like, their, their lease is up and they need to find a new place. And Wallace is actually dating someone who has, like, who's gonna move, he's gonna move in with the person he's dating. Wallace is gonna move in with the guy he's dating. And Scott just kind of, like, he didn't want to just, like, leave Scott out in his ass. But he's kind of like, okay, like, we could stay here. We can sign a new lease and stay here. Or you can ask Ramona if you want to move in with her. And he's like, and he's like kind of, like, not, not like, necessarily tell, tell, tell him to do it, but kind of leaning towards, like, you know, that'd be the, hitting at, like, that would be a better move. That'd be a smarter move. That'd be a more, like, a more, you know, it'd be a step in the right direction to get to you being a better person. You doing more and you being more of an adult and you growing up. You're kind of, like, subtly, subtly hinting at it. In reality, it's like he already decided to not resign the lease and I'm moving out anyway. It's like eventually, so when Scott finds out, he, when Scott eventually asks Ramona to move in with her, she says yes. Well, I'm like, okay, good, because I was already moving out anyway. <laughs> I just kind of didn't want to throw you out there like that. Like he was trying not to, like, he didn't want to fuck him over because they're friends, but also, dude, you got to get your shit together. It's like that tough love, but like not just flat out being rude about it. And it's really dope. But also, like, it's story talks like there's a lot about how like they make a lot of mistakes and like all the characters made mistakes in the past but it's like it's also like just because you like a big story like a big point that hits that story trying to hits at is like just because you've made mistakes before doesn't make you a bad person just because you've done bad things in the past doesn't mean you're a bad person doesn't mean you can't change people can change and do better and be better as people and you should strive to do that even though you made mistakes you have to you can't ignore your mistakes you know you can't just get rid of your mistakes you can't fix your mistakes by ignoring them you have to acknowledge them you have to try harder you have to work at fixing them you have to work on your mistakes and fix them and then move forward as a move forward as a in being a better person and try harder to be a better person in the future and keep working at it and not just you know just because you don't acknowledge that you fucked up doesn't mean you didn't fuck up but just because you fucked up doesn't mean you can't do better you can't be better you can't do more you know you can't go above and beyond doesn't mean you can't get, get past that and like it really like it's not like it's one of those things like it's not necessarily like hammered home like super cheesy style it's more like I really like this movie. I really like it because, like, it's subtle about that. It's not essentially subtle, but it's, like, it doesn't flat out. It's not, like, a fucking, like, it's not, like, cheesy 80s sitcom or, like, a very special episode. It's, like, dude, hey, do better. But, like, 
all your friends, like, especially in a book. In a movie, it's kind of like, I feel like the movie, the movie doesn't have enough time to fully get that. Like, it gets the message across, but it doesn't, like, hammer it home as hard in a book. Because in the book, it goes from, basically, in the movie, it's essentially, it's Scott's battles with the exes while the band he's in, Sex by Bomb, is also competing in this battle of the bands. And it just so happens that a lot of the people that, like, a lot of Ramona's exes also happen to be connected to this battle of the bands or music in some way. Also, Scott's ex, like, it's got, it's got one of Scott's exes, uh, fuck, Envy Adams, who, like, she really fucked him up, like, book and movie. It's like, in the book, in the movie, it's more like, oh, yeah, she was just an asshole to him. And, like, you know, she got famous. She went to school. She went to college in a different state, in a different city, and then ended up breaking up with Scott because she's like, oh, yeah, blah, blah. This guy she's really cool friends with. Turns out she was dating that guy the whole time. <laughs> and then was lying about it and eventually broke up for Sam Scott and then like changed her name and her, the band she blew up got really <laughs> she was in got, blew, got blah. the band she was in blew up and got really big it's called the Clash at Demon Head and like it turns out that their bass player is one of Ramona's evil Ramona's evil exes but in the books like it's way crazier like the the envy the envy Ramon the envy uh fuck the envy Scott relationship is way different like it's still like she broke up with him and, like, still kind of fucked him up. And, like, it was slowly over time. But, like, it's way more tragic in the book. Like, it's way crazier. Shit's way more, like, mental. Like, she was the reason why he got into music, period. Envy is the whole reason why Scott plays bass. Like, <laughs> like she got him into music. She got him into a band. She got him into joining bands. She got him playing bass. Like, she's the reason why he is who he is. And, like, a lot of why he is the way he is now. And then just to have that, like, ripped away from you, like, I get why she's, like, his big ex and really fucked him up mentally. But also, in the movie, it, it's uh, Ramona, one of her exes, one of Ramona's evil exes is Roxy. And she's, like, an evil ninja. But, like, in the movie, Scott has to fight. Like, her and Scott fight, but, like, Ramona controls Scott's limbs because he refused to hit a girl. But in the book, the Ramona fight is with Envy. Like, and it's Envy versus Ramona, and it's fucking sick. It's so crazy. But then also, like, there's a scene where Todd punches, uh, Knives ends up dating young Neil at one point. They get, try to get Scott, make Scott jealous. She ends up dating young Neil. She gets highlights put in her hair. And, like, while they're at the Clash of Demon Head show, they get invited backstage because MB knows Scott, you know, it's like, so you get, know you guys, like, they're, they get Scott's band, Sex Bomb, to play for him, to open up for him at the show. So they end up inviting him backstage. And Todd punches the highlights out of Knives' hair in the book, in the movie. But in the book, their drummer does it. The Clash of Demon Head <laughs> drummer does it because she has a fucking bionic arm that's like wrapped up in bandages so no one knows like it's like wrong arm and she punches knives in the face and knocks the highlights out of her hair and it's like she has this hidden bionic arm and it's super fucking crazy and I don't want to spoil but there's let's just say there's other shit that happens with her and she's like that character is way more important in the books but in the movie it's kind of like she she has the same character design in the book but she has and the same character design in the book and the movie but the drummer has no speaking. She doesn't doesn't have a speaking role. But she's there more as an Easter egg. So it was an Easter egg. But also, I feel like I can't fully remember because I this has been a minute since I read the books. But I feel like her entire story is actually in the third book, like the uh, Scott versus Todd and like the whole Clash of Demon Head and Envy thing is actually more of a book three thing. Like it sets up at the end of book two, but it doesn't fully come to fruition until book three. And since it's like said movies mostly book two, they kind of like. They end that in the movie. They rush through that end of the movie and keep moving forward through, like, the X's in the movie. But in the book, it's a way longer. Like, the movie takes place over, like, a couple months, maybe, where the book is, like, it's literal years of, like, their lives of them just doing this shit and going through all these, like, trials and tribulations and their ups and downs and all the crazy shit. Like, in the book, in the movie, Clash of Demon Head, uh, not Clash of Demon Head, Sex Bomb is just playing this battle of bands, trying to win the battle of bands to get a chance to sign a record deal. Where in the books... They fucking play, like, one... They play one show in the Battle of the Bands, and then eventually, like, Kim moves in with new roommates, and they find out one of her roommates has... Uh, Steven Stills, who's the lead singer, lead guitarist of Sex Bomb, and writes all their songs, finds out that that Kim, one of Kim's new roommates, has a recording studio in the, at their house, and so he fucking, like, just gets obsessed with, like, recording an album, and just there all the time, to the point where, like, the band completely stops practicing. They never practice anymore. It's all about the album... They all they do is like all they ever meet, everybody they ever do is meet up there to record shit and like Stills is just like constantly like zombied out working on an album at all times, like super like no life outside of it. To the point of like young Neil who's room with Steven Stills. Only like in the movie, like they don't even get to the point of the movie. And the movie actually replaced Scott replaces Scott in the band at one point. But in the books it's 
still get so obsessed with recording the album that like they move all their equipment to the house of the studio that so they never they used to practice at they used to practice at stills and young neil's house but in the book they get so obsessed with recording that they move all their equipment to the studio that they don't practice anymore so they like never see young neil to the point of like he almost goes like feral like he gets super fucking lonely and like starts going crazy almost because like he just never sees his friends anymore because they never go over there anymore because they don't practice so they just never go over to his house anymore to the point like one time like kim and kim kim and fucking scott go over there looking for stills and like he's like all like shadowy and hermity and like like crazed like crazed look on his face and shit and i was like has like scraggly five o'clock shadow and like they're asking him where they're asking where stills is like what He's at the studio. And, like, he just like, kind of almost goes off on him about, like, how he never sees you. Are you even still friends anymore? Like, I never see you guys anymore. You never come over because you don't practice here, so you never come over. And just, like, and it's, like, basically, like, how, essentially, since they stopped practicing, they basically just neglected, completely neglected one of their friends. Like, all three of them just completely neglected one of their friends and just never acknowledged him. And they never invite him out to shit because they're used to just him being at practice. So when they go to things, he goes with them. When practice is over and they leave to go somewhere, he can go out to eat and stuff. He goes with them. But since he's not there, <laughs> since they don't practice anymore, they don't see him. So they forget to invite them and like everyone else is going out to dinner and just like having fun and you know they're all like living lives and shit and like they just keep forgetting to invite them to shit to the point like he just like feels super neglected and left out and just kind of like goes into like almost an existential crisis and kind of questions his whole life because he never sees his friends anymore <laughs> and it was like they don't even touch that in the movie they don't even touch that in the movie and i kind of see why because it's super fucked up and kind of dark but it's also like a really like i don't want to say cool but like it's a really relatable thing in life i'm like Sometimes you, like, friends grow apart. It's not even, like, seriously, like, they stop liking the guy. It's just like, oh, fuck, you forget. Sometimes you forget when you, things you used to do all the time, a person you see every day because you see him under certain cir uh, circumstances, those circumstances get cut out or that loop you're doing your life changes or you don't stop going somewhere or stop going to a certain place where you saw that person every time, you don't see that person anymore and you kind of forget that you haven't seen them in forever. And, like, you know, because you're so used to, like, you're hanging out with everyone else you used to hang out with that group, so you kind of forget about that person. You think, oh, no, you've been, oh, shit, you weren't there. But it's crazy. Also, there's another character in the book I I remember her name. Fuck. I think it's Sarah, who like used to be friends with. She was friends with Kim and Scott and when they were in high school, and like she left to go become an actress, whatever. And at one point in the book, she comes back to Canada and like she starts hanging out with them again. And it's like blast on the past that like has Scott's like mind racing and like reminds him like all the history they had together and like their memory, his memories with her and shit. And like that's super crazy and intense. Characters not in the movie at all. Once again, not long enough. But there also is supposedly what I supposedly there's a excuse me an anime series in the works at Netflix based off of Scott Pilgrim versus the World, which I really hope that comes out because it's super dope and the comics are like anime inspired like all the character art in the comics the characters all have like really big eyes and like bright bright hair and like and like super like you know like it's super anime inspired but also the original release of the books were in black because the book series is they're actually graphic novels and the original release is in black and white. But I recommend getting the color versions because the color versions are like look really good, and it also like helps distinguish like certain characters, because like a lot of the characters you can't really tell like you they have similar facial features you can tell them apart they're not like drawn exactly the same but they have similar facial they have similar faces, and like it's mostly based on like hairstyle and hair color, because like so Ramona Kim and Sarah look really similar like i can see how like you they would look similar in black and white and be hard to distinguish <laughs> just because like their faces are really similar. like they all have the giant eyes and like they have different haircuts and stuff but like a lot of it's based on hair color and like you can i could tell like if you without full context or like you're not fully like you spaced out slightly while reading which i know is possible i've done it but like if you kind of space out a little you would kind of forget like what's going on or you like you leave the book for a while and come back and you don't remember what was happening you try to jump back in it could be hard to tell which character that is because they do kind of look similar <laughs> to each other. But, yeah, I highly recommend the color editions. Also, completely forgot about the, <laughs> like, I've got this far in, forgot to mention. There's a video game based on it, which is, like, a hybrid between the books and the movie. And it's called Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, The Game. And it's, like, a 16-bit side-scroller beat-em-up. Really fun. Highly recommend it. It went away for a while. It They brought it back. It's made by Ubisoft. It took it off the shelves for a while. went away for like years. It's finally, it came back. I don't know if it's still available. If it is, I highly recommend it grabbing it while you can. If you like beat-em-ups, if you like side scrolling beat-em-ups, I fucking love them. They're really great. If you like 16-bit games, it's awesome. It's like kind of like the, the overworld map 
of the game, like, where you travel, how you travel, looks like Super Mario World. It's super awesome. Like, there's item upgrades. There's, like, weapon upgrades. You can pick up weapons and things. There's move upgrades. There's hidden characters. There's, like, warp levels. There's this thing in the series in the movies, the book, and in the game called Subspace Highway. And they brought that in the game. It's super cool. It's super awesome. Like, <laughs> basically, you beat up enemies. They drop coins. You pick up the coins. You use the money to buy, like, stop item shops. Let's go to item shops, buy upgrades, and buy health. And, like, just uh, stat boosts and stuff. It's so fucking fun. The bosses are really crazy. Like, it's really awesome. It really looks, like, it looks a lot like the characters. It's more based off the characters from the book. It's more based off the book visually. But also parts of the story are kind of like music, kind of relate to the movie. Because, like I said, the books, the movie, and the game are all pretty much related. Like, they all kind of tie into each other in certain ways. They all reference each other. It's really dope. The actual movie itself references, like, a lot of parts from the game. Well, no, because the book does do, the books, the movie, and the game also have this thing where, like, when Scott beats one of the exes, they explode in the coins. And, like, it's never, like, explained in the books why they explode in the coins. And then in the movie, they do it, and it's kind of like, oh, it's kind of like a video game reference. Because, like, the whole movie is, like I said, it's the best video game movie. Because essentially is a video game movie. But in the video game, the actual game, it makes sense that they do it. But it's never explained in the books why they do it or the movie. But it's really fucking awesome. It's a great visual effect. I love it. It's super dope. Highly recommend checking out all three Really great series. I absolutely love it. One of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, the book is really good. I don't know some of my top books because I don't have a lot of books. I can't really, I don't really have a book top five right now. But highly recommend the movie. Highly recommend the books. Highly recommend the game. They're all great. Definitely worth the time. And also, thank you for checking out this episode. Thank you for taking the time to hear me rant about something I really like and really enjoy. And I hope you enjoy hearing this. I hope you enjoy this episode. And I hope you tune into the next one. But please, do me a favor. Like this video. Comment on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends. Tell your friends to like the channel. Tell them to come visit. Tell your friends to come check out a video. Follow me on Twitter at TalkThat6. Follow me on Facebook at TalkingThat6.